going on everyone? Welcome to another episode here at headquarters. Today, we're going to be answering the number one question I always get. Moses, where do you get your materials from? Today, we're going to primarily be speaking about the type of leathers that I use, where I get my leathers from, and where you guys can get the same exact leathers that I have been using for years. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the leathers that I use are right for your application. So we're gonna put it through a torture test today. I wanna see how strong the leather is. I wanna see how resilient the type of materials that I use are. I wanna see if they have a ton of great color options. We're gonna learn that today. So let's roll on the intro. Battery life on these Sony A6300s, they suck, man. Yeah, them shits are gone. Man, there ain't no one here. So as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm asking myself, what are some realistic scenarios in where you would wear a hat and you know something might happen to it? So I sort of I thought of three different types of things that you might find yourself in. One, you're you're driving in your car and the wind blows, hat flies out the car. Boom, boom, hat tumbles in the street, and now you th you're wondering, fuck, dude, my hat is probably destroyed. So we're gonna see. We're not gonna throw it outside of the window, but this is gonna be our abrasion test, right? Number two. I want to see if your hat somehow got caught in a house fire. By thinking to yourself, is my hat important enough to go back in and get it in the house fire? Answer is yes. Therefore, we're going to see how long your hat can last under the extreme pressures of fire. Three, we're going to see, and this is probably the least realistic of all the tests, is to see if you were to sweat in your hat, how much sweat can get into your hat before it affects the integrity of it. Those in mind, we're gonna go ahead and do those three tests and see what the results are. Let's go. We have three strips right here. This strip, we're gonna call it the fire strip. Abrasion strip. This one, it's probably gonna be extra, but if I can think of something to do with it later, I will. All right, so for the abrasion test, we're outside, and I got a rock here. Regular, typical, standard, run-of-the-mill rock. See how long it takes before we get a rip or a tear or a hole in the python skin. So I guess the surface is kind of like twofold because not only is it pressing against really hard against the rock here, it's also pressing really hard up against the floor here. So we're just gonna see how many swipes it takes before we start seeing some abrasion, right? So. If you guys notice, the, the scales go one direction like a fish does. So I can either go against the grain or I can go with the grain. I'm just gonna go with the grain here. So let's get to it. All right, so you can see, I'm already starting to see some wear right here, right? But still, there's no hole here. Let's try to keep going. All right, and I'm putting I'm putting some pressure into it, and I'm still even though I'm kind of chipping away at the scales here, I'm still I still don't have a hole here, and so I'm not just lightly brushing them against it. I'm actually putting some force behind it. But uh, one thing I did notice is that I've never seen snakeskin take all this abuse, right? And even with all this abuse, I am getting some scale deterioration here, but still there's no holes. Let's keep going. I think I see something here. All right, so we do have some pass through here. So as you can see, but yeah, 
just we finally got some holes through it and I've never seen it like this so I guess we'll kind of see what happens later on now we move on to the sweat test here here is our thermometer right currently set to zero degrees in the ice water had to recalibrate it and we have some boiling water here first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate sweat so the best way I know how to do it we're gonna make salt water All right, so I think our salt water is at the temperature that we, that we need it to be at. All right, this is an accurate representation on how hot it is in Florida. 100 degrees, let's go. Throw the towel in there. Let us soak up all that salt water goodness. Ah, that shit's still hot. All right, so as you can see, I have the wet towel right up against where your forehead would be here. And so we're just gonna let it sit here for a little bit and see how long it'll take and typically what you're gonna see is you're gonna start seeing sweat right here and this is where it's gonna start kind of creeping out now I've seen this happen before with other hats that had clients had sent me to get redone I'm just waiting to see if I see any type of like sweat here and of course if it's wet it's gonna appear there and um, I guess we we'll want to see what happens when it dries alright so it's been about 30 40 minutes and we can see that there has been some I guess leakage onto the snake skin, right? I've seen cases where it's a lot worse, but seeing as how I had a soaking wet towel pressed against the back of the hat with a bowl, that's not that bad. I'm just not taking it off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait here for about another 20 or 30 minutes and see what happens when it looks like when it dries. Is it gonna keep these same marks here? or is it gonna completely evaporate and look normal again? About 45 minutes I went by and I had noticed that the watermarks ended up creeping up further and further into the skin here. And now one thing that you guys might have a question of is that you see that the color of the skin matches the color of the hat. And so from the, from the other previous tests that you showed, that I showed, you can see that um, you know, snake skin comes in a wide variety of colors. And I'm wondering, do the colors bleed? There's no ink. I don't know what the dyeing process is when it comes to the leather, but as far as color fastness, this is great. You know, nothing in here is going to show any signs of bleeding. But what I'm guessing is gonna happen is that the water is gonna creep a little bit further before it starts to evaporate. It's been about a day or two, and I haven't went to go take a look at the hat just yet. But what I'm expecting to see is, even though it's been a couple of days, the hat's probably gonna be dry. But since we simulated sweat by using salt water, I'm thinking that we're going to see at least a, a sign that there was a presence of some type of fluid that dried up and the salt left like a, like a, like I guess a clear indicator of it. So I'm expecting to see like a white line around the hat. Now, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. We're going to take a look right now. But this has happened with regular hats that don't have the python treatment on it. And that's what ended up showing. So I don't think this is going to be any different. But we're going to find out. I'm actually 100% wrong as wet as it got there's literally no signs that it was ever wetted in so like even on the underside that just goes to show that python skin is resilient to sweat as well at least simulated sweat there it goes that test is a win you lose some and win some so the next test is the fire test ultimately if you got your hat lost in the house fire and you're thinking about should i go back in there and get it is it still safe this fire test is gonna prove it. First, we gotta get a lighter. And I know everyone in their house has a drawer like this. All these sauces and shit like you had ordered in the past. And everyone keeps weird stuff in here. We got forks up, a random ass wrapper. Does it work? Does it work? Ah, oh, that's just hard as shit. Oh, wait. Wait. Woo! We got fire. Alright, so I don't know how I'm gonna hold this to keep it still and to light the flame. And it's kind of windy out here. Um. I'm gonna sit down the lower step so we can do it right here. So I'm probably just gonna keep it on the stair and just like light a little baby piece of it. And I don't think it's gonna like catch fire. I just wanna see if there's gonna be any like damage to it. All right. It looks regular. I'm gonna light this corner right here. It looks regular, nothing right now. So we're gonna see. I'm gonna light the bottom side first to see what happens with that. Okay, it's curling up. All 
I guess I satisfied my curiosity as to what happens when you burn the snake skin. It don't really smell like nothing. Just like kind of flaky and crispy and shit let's light let's light the skin side the color side okay all right I mean shit it's still hot I mean, so look, it gets it gets crispy. So yeah, if you got your hat caught in a house fire, probably don't want to go back and get it. That's pretty cool though. I'm keeping it. All right, so we just finished the stress tests for only the python skin. I use a wide variety of leathers, python skin, ostrich leather, stingray, lamb skin. The reason why we chose python to do this test is because python, honestly, is probably 90% of the material that I use to make my custom hats. Everyone has always been asking me over the past couple years, hey Mo, where can I get my own snake skin? I want to do projects with sneakers or slides. Where can I get it from? And I've always avoided the question because I didn't want to create competition for myself. It's me being 100% transparent with you guys. But now, um, I feel like I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a good place. Um, I wanna help you guys out. The people that I get my leathers from are called Rohe Leathers, right? R-O-J-E Leathers. I've been dealing with them for years. They are amazing people. The person that I deal with, her name is Natasha. She makes ordering any kind of skin you absolutely want super easy and super convenient. So Natasha, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Her email is going to be down in the description below. Send her an email. Hey Natasha, this is what I want. You can order by phone. You can order directly from the website. I've been dealing with them for years. They know me by name. So if you do shoot out an email to Natasha, let her know. Hey, Moses sent me. I saw his video. There is going to be a discount code for you guys. I let them know that I'm actually going to be introducing them to you guys. If you guys choose to get leather for your projects from them, all you have to do is use my coupon code. That gives you 10% off. The best thing about them is you get to buy one or two pieces if you want. Really low MOQ, which stands for minimum order quantity. So you don't have to buy big bulk just to finish your project. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much. Give my friend Natasha a call. Let her know that Moses from YouTube sent you. You guys will see me in the next video. It's been awesome hanging out with you guys. We'll talk soon.